going to dismiss the children at this time and the workers. Thank you so much for being a part of working and helping out. Um, we're going to keep continuing into this just a little bit. I just want to read a scripture here and as we read uh, we're going to change that wording just a little bit. Um, that is who you are. That's who we are. Okay? In that sense. I want to read a scripture in Isaiah 42. Behold my servant. This is the father talking about his son but he also is relating to us. Behold my servant whom I behold, my chosen one in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him, and he will bring forth justice. We'll skip a few scriptures and we'll go down to, I am the Lord, verse number six, and I am the Lord your God, who gives breath to the people and the spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord who, the Lord your God. I have called you into righteousness. I will also hold you by the hand, and I will watch over you. I will appoint you as a covenant to my people and to the nations. You shall open the blind eyes of the blind, and you shall also bring out those prisoners from the dungeon. And those who dark, dwell in darkness, you will bring them out of the prison. For I am the Lord, and that is my name. Let us sing that together. We are way makers today. We're atmosphere changers today. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God. That is who you are, you are. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. It's who we are. That is who we are. That is who we are.
my God, that is who you are. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for the spirit of the Lord. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells within us. Father, I thank you for what you're doing in our midst, Lord. I thank you for what you're doing in our country. I thank you for what you're doing around the world, Lord God. And Lord, I thank you for your goodness and your greatness, Lord. Evil seems like it's prominent, but Father, Lord, you have a promise. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, as we go out, Lord, we are way makers. Father, we are the light of the world. And why should we hide it under a bushel? Because Father, you are in us you're around about us. Jesus, the light of this world, shines like the sun, for you are the sun. Today we are excited to be alive. We're excited to be here. We're excited to sing about the things of you and the greatness of who you are. In the mighty and precious name of Jesus, amen. Why don't you turn to somebody and say, I'm a way maker. Praise the Lord. Hey, it's so good to see all your smiling faces. Those who are joining us with Facebook, we are on Facebook and also on YouTube. So if you just kind of do a little bit of a search, however that works, you'll find us there. And so if you missed today or if you want to share this with uh, somebody, just go ahead and say, hey, um, we missed you today, but want to join, have you join us. So let's turn to Colossians 4. We're back into Colossians today. Powerful scripture, powerful insight. Today, what the Lord does want to share with us today as far as um, our, our mindset, as far as who we are in Christ Jesus, and uh, we're going to move forward today in so many different ways, and so we just thank you for joining us. Thank you, Lord, that our eyes are opened, our ears are opened unto the things of you. Lord, I pray that we would uh, articulate well what you want to say, Lord, by the Spirit of a living God. We thank you today for those who are here. Lord, we ask that you would just comfort those who have lost loved ones, who are walking through some difficult times right now. Lord, that the peace of God, which passes all understanding, would come upon them and be with them and encounter them today. Lord, through your Spirit as well as through individuals. Lord, I thank you that we have the opportunity to share the love of Christ to our fellow members, to those who we are in relationship with, Lord. So, Lord, I thank you that we can be vessels who, who are used of you, that will walk in the things, that will walk in the things that you walked in, Jesus. And that's kindness and goodness and greatness. Lord, we thank you that the fruit of the Spirit is alive and well in our life, and people are able to see and, and, and enjoy the fruit of the Spirit that comes only from you. Holy Spirit, thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. One of the questions we're going to answer today is why pray? Um, I've had uh, many times where people um, have talked to me, and um, I've even asked the question, why pray? And so we're going to try to answer that a little bit today. Um, there's lots of avenues, lots of ways to walk into this because prayer is, uh, uh, is amazing. It's communication with God. It's a, it's a way that God communicates with us. And uh, sometimes we look for a position to uh, pray in, uh, but we can pray uh, in any kind of position. And uh, we really don't even have to, uh, um, I, I, sometimes I just pray in my mind. I love to pray out loud. Therefore, I hear myself talking, which is kind of weird for men to do. Women, they, they don't mind talking. <laughs> Look in the mirror and they're gone. Yeah. So anyway, uh, Teresa is, after she's got a uh, notebook, and she has got 61, 56 chickens, 56 chickens. And we've only got three named. One's KFC. The other one is what? Tender. <laughs> anyway, she needs some more names for the chickens. So she'll be in the back. Uh, let's start in Colossians 4, verse number 2. I'm going to read the whole thing, and then we're going to land in verse number 2 again. Devote yourself to prayer, <clears throat> keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving. 
very key, praying at the same time for us as well, that God may open up to us a door for the word so that we may speak forth the mystery of Christ, for which I have also been imprisoned, in order that I may make it clear in the way I ought to speak. I thought this was just so amazing this week. Many times when we pray, we're looking at Scripture and it says, Say to the mountain and be be thou removed. And Paul is just giving us a new insight here when we pray. He's giving us a direction to pray. Uh, Many times uh, we look at Scripture and we we look at what God is saying, maybe through Paul or maybe what Jesus says. And um, we look at it and we kind of discuss that downstairs. He's not just asking us to do something. He's instructing us or commanding us to do it. And so if we're not willing to um, follow the commands of the Lord, then um, he has asked us to do good in this world. If we're choosing to do good, good things are going to come. If we choose to do wrongly, wrong things are going to come. It's the sowing and reaping principle. It's a spiritual law. So in our case, right, as we are uh, born-again believers, we want to conduct ourselves in the community well, because we represent the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We are walking in a divine nature. We are not walking according to the sinful flesh anymore, but we are walking according to what um, First Peter says, what God says about us, that Jesus has come that we may partake of his divine nature. How many know that's wonderful? Amen? So as we look at this, Paul is talking. He's saying, I want you to pray for me. <clears throat> so He's got a mountain in front of him. And many times we're praying for the mountain to be removed. He's praying here, uh, don't remove the mountain, okay? But pray that I would be able to minister to somebody in my imprisonment. How many are trying to, um, asking people to pray for you to get out of a situation? Right? Right? We pray to get out of what God maybe uh, led us into, in a sense, right? God doesn't, didn't lead necessarily Paul into prison, but because of the circumstances, situations, the things that we face in life, uh, people hate the gospel, therefore they hated Paul. They hated Paul when he spoke the truth, and they would beat him, and they would put him in prison. But Paul's not saying that, get me out of prison. No, he's saying, give me an opportunity. Pray that I have an opportunity to speak the gospel in such a way that people will have ears to hear and eyes to see. So I think we need to change the focus of the way we pray. We want to pray according to what God is wanting to do. See, God uses man to reach man. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. But we're, we're waiting for God to do everything when God has already done everything. Okay? So, so as, we, as we look at this, um, Paul says devote. Now, the word devote means this. Constantly and diligently. Whether that's one week, one day, one hour, two years, seven years. Diligently. Diligently. Okay? So devote yourself constantly, diligently, continually, steadfastly. Steadfast. Unmovable. Because where have we built our rock? Where have we built our house on the rock? The firm foundation. Jesus, who is the Word. The Word doesn't move. God does not move. The firm, found, firm foundation does not move. We move. Okay? So we're going to talk a little bit about the sovereignty of God. I don't know if you know what the word sovereignty means, but it's all powerful, okay? And we're going to dissect that just a little bit and give you a little bit of an illustration of what God means in that according to his word. Okay, so the other, uh, the other word that comes with that or definition that comes with that to devote is to cleave faithfully to someone. I'm clinging to Jesus, I'm clinging to my father, okay? You are devoted, you are steadfast, 
You're not wavering back and forth, but you are hanging on to and living in Christ Jesus. Christ is in you, right? We're not hanging on by our fingertips. We're not just waiting for uh, the rapture to come. We're not just um, waiting till that time. But we are diligently praying that God's will would be done here on this earth through us, through me, through you, right? And we're going to encounter some difficult times as we process through this. Because guess what? The world hates you. The enemy hates you. Now, here we go. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself here. So while in prayer, in verse number two, while in prayer, do this. Be sober-minded. Pray what the Word of God says. Say, <clears throat> think about what matters. Have this attitude. Have an attitude of thanksgiving. How many know when you pray with an attitude of thanksgiving, your prayer is different? <clears throat> we pray differently. We're not praying from a victim mentality. We are praying from a, a victorious stance, a victorious position because of Christ who is in us. And we're praying out of faith, even though I don't see that at that moment. I pray by faith of what God says about his promises. <clears throat> so I am devoting myself to the one who does not disappoint. God's word does not disappoint. The firm foundation, the cornerstone, the, the very cornerstone that people stumbled over does not disappoint you. Jesus will not disappoint you. God's word will not disappoint you. Now, so as Paul is, as Paul is asking us to pray, he is asking us to pray that there's an opportunity that Paul's words would minister to individuals, that the word of God would be made known even in prison, okay? And maybe even to prison guards or maybe to the jailer or whoever it may be. Paul is wanting the good news to come to people because he knows what it did to his life. It changed him a 180. He repented and he walked with the things of the Lord. The, the, the carnal man, right? The carnal man or the natural man wants to put its attention on the things that we see. So if we see something that's bad, our attention goes that way. And we don't focus on the promises of God. So that's exactly what the enemy wants you to do. We walk around defeated because we're looking at what the enemy has done, and the enemy is doing, and he's doing that through man. Really, um, in all actuality, Satan has no power. He only has power to those who give him power. That's all it is. <laughs> he really has no power. Especially, right, especially when Jesus came and he stripped sin and death the power of sin and death. So therefore, we walk in victory because of who Jesus is. Now, we're not walking arrogantly, but we're walking in confidence, knowing who Christ is and knowing who Christ is in us. We read that scripture. The spirit of the Lord is upon you. The same spirit that was in Christ Jesus is in you. How many will receive that in the name of Jesus? How many will walk in that in the name of Jesus? Amen. So as we look at this, we're asked the question, why pray? Have you said this out loud? Have you said this to somebody? Why pray? Because God's going to do whatever he wants to anyway. That's absolutely wrong. That's bogus. Amen. It is bogus. It really is. Amen. It's not accurate. Okay? And I'll, I'll describe it in just a minute here, right? Um, Romans 5.5, 5, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who he has given to us. Why pray? Because God works through you to fulfill his purposes and plans here on this earth. Now, we're not forgetting about Jesus. We're not forgetting about the cross. We're not forgetting about what Jesus has done for us. But primarily, God is, is wanting you 
and you to walk in the goodness of God, to walk in the knowledge of God, and bring forth in our community, in the atmosphere that, or the, the atmosphere changer or the arena that I talk about, wherever you may be, he's wanting you to bring forth God's plans and purposes through you. Now, God does not do whatever he wants. Now, let's move it over to this place right here. God is sovereign. He's all-powerful. So we're going to do a little picture stuff here. God is all-powerful. If I can spell sovereign right, I'll be good. Rain. Sovereign. There you go. Good enough, right? All-powerful. So we asked the question... If God is all powerful, then why in the world, why in the world is there wars? Why in the world are things happening the way they're happening? Why in the world are babies being dumped in the garbage? Why in the world are pe people murdering one another? We'll answer that. God is still all powerful. Okay? He's sovereign. You'll, ne you'll never strip that away. But the reason, right? The reason is that God said, and we'll turn there. Let's turn there. Um, let, me, let me back up. 138.2, Psalms 138.2. God is not, <laughs> in a sense, God is bound. He's bound by his word, okay? And so we have to understand that as we look at this in, in context. So 138.2 says, For you, O Lord, have magnified your word above your name. So in other words, God is bound to, in a good way, to his word. He does not lie. He does not lie. So in other words, when Adam was given the authority, and we'll look at that, and if you want to turn to Ephesians, um, not Ephesians, Galatians 1.28. As we look at Galatians, or Genesis 1, for mankind through Adam, okay? Now, God created Adam, and he says this, and God blessed them, Adam and Eve, he made them, he formed them, and God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. That's a command. Then the command comes with authority. Okay? God does not tell you to do something without having the authority to do it. Okay? So he's commanding Adam, subdue it, to bring under control, to overcome. And have dominion, the word dominion means have sovereignty, all power, okay? Adam is relying on the strength and the wisdom and the instructions of the all-powerful one, the sovereignty of God, okay? Without the sovereignty of God, without the um, uh, cooperation or the... Uh, Cooperation with God, man can do nothing. Okay? So keep that in mind. So we have, God has given us the authority as man, as he, as mankind cooperates with God, he therefore will listen to and do exactly what God has commanded them to do. Now, so this points as Adam's purpose in life. Right? Be sovereign, con take control over, bring under control, overcome. And so God is wanting, it's been laid out, this is what you do, Adam. Okay? Now, Adam has a will. Adam has a, the freedom of choice, in other words. God didn't set him up. God didn't set him up. God is instructing him. Okay? God didn't tempt him. God just said, don't eat from that. Okay? 
God is asking you, you, will you follow me? Will you be true to my word? Will you be true to what I ask you to do? That's all he's asking us, right? Will you be true to it? I don't know. You have a choice. We have the freedom to choose. So as we go here, right? Um, so, so Adam, God has laid out, and there's, there's more to it than just uh, uh, taking dominion over the fish and the sea and the birds of the air and whatever else. I mean, there's more to it. But God and Adam had it all figured out, right? God had it figured out for Adam. There you go. So, uh, so Adam, Adam was given a, an instruction. He was given a command. Okay? We'll soften it up by saying instruction, but it's really a command. Don't. Don't eat. Now, freedom of choice. Adam had not sinned. Sin was not on the earth right now. So Adam had a choice to follow God or to follow after what he wanted to do. Now, Satan came, became a part of that. But on the same sense, Adam rebelled against the word of God. Now, we sugarcoat it with, I think we should sugarcoat it with, well, <laughs> Eve was deceived and so was Adam. No. <laughs> They were deceived, yes, but they rebelled. They knew exactly what God said. But they opened their heart up to, to hear another option. And, and I think we have to be very careful as individuals, as we're walking through this, right, that we follow what the Word of God says, that we follow the instructions of the Word of God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind. Love your neighbor as yourself, okay? That's His instructions for us. If you, if you listen to somebody that's, well, you don't really have to put God first. You're opening yourself up for deception. And you're going to walk in a lie. And you're going to fall. Because you've chosen this over his instructions. Now, the love of God is great. The love of God and mercy of God and the grace of God is amazing. Okay? You're here because of the grace of God. Not because of anything that you did, but because of Jesus. Okay, so don't get all arrogant and say, I made the right. No, you didn't. <laughs> it was because the man in the middle, we did that. It's because of Jesus. Now, Adam had clearly heard what God said. Adam was given the ability sub to subdue the earth. Now, <clears throat> Adam chose to not cooperate with the Father. Okay? In that, he chose himself. We'll just call it the lust of man, or we'll say sinful nature, or we will say he chose to listen to the God of this world. Let's do that differently the God of this world, okay? So when he chose to do that, God is still sovereign. God is still sovereign. God is all-powerful. But he can't work. He can't work here, per se, because man has chosen to go this way instead. That's why you see babies in the garbage. That's why you see babies being aborted. That's why you see murder. That's why you see hatred. That's why you see envy and jealousy and greed. And because man has tried to make decisions, not according to God's ways, but according to his sinful nature. It's no wonder we're in a mess we're in. Because I'm going to do what I want to do. Really, basically. I have the freedom to do whatever I want to do. I don't care if it hurts you or not. That's the attitude we have. Talked about respect. We don't, we don't respect. We don't respect one another. We don't respect anybody in general that's over us. It's just me and God. No. God has set up a structure for you and I to submit to. And that's authority. We submit to authority. 
If you want your life to move forward, you best submit to authority. Submit to even the law of the land, per se, as long as it's not against the word of God. But we think, right, we can just do whatever we want. No, that's not what the word says. Now, as we look at the old covenant and we see that God, he is walking through and God is still sovereign. He's all powerful. But in the Old Testament, as we see, he is looking for men and women that will believe in him, that will believe his word. I mean, people come up, the men of old and the women of old will come up in your head and you go, they believed in God. Mordecai and who is it? Who is it? Esther. Esther. Is it Esther? Yes. Mordecai and Esther. Who's Naomi? Tell me who Naomi is. What's that? Okay, there we go. So here we go. So God found, he found people that were willing to embrace his sovereignty. Right? Abraham, he looked at Abraham and he goes, man, that guy. I've been waiting a long time for Abraham. I've been waiting for him because he's got a heart that will believe me. Did Abraham do everything right? No. But that didn't disqualify Abraham because Abraham believed and it was counted to him as righteousness. Oh, don't you love that? Don't you love that when if you, uh, if you mess up, you're not disqualified? Because you are the righteousness of Christ Jesus and Jesus took on. Therefore, you're perfect in Christ Jesus. You're righteous. And therefore, now, we, we, we play out a different scenario, and we'll show that, than it was in the old, old Covenant. It's a different scenario. Same heart, though. You have to have a heart that believes. You have to have a heart that allows the Word to come in and say, I don't care what you say, the Word of God trumps you. Amen. The Word of God is what trumps everything. The name of Jesus is above every name. Yes. The cross that, was, that, that Jesus laid on gave me opportunity to walk in a full covenant, a new covenant, administered by the blood of Jesus, the high priest, Jesus himself. Jesus watches over his covenant. It, it can't fail. <laughs> it can't fail unless you choose to do this. Okay. God, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's back up a little bit. Okay, here we go. Moses, if God, and, and I'm, just, I'm just throwing a story here, okay? Moses, there are the people of children, they're the children of Israel that were in bondage, and they were in bondage because they did this. They chose to have a king rather than the Lord, king of kings. They said, I want to be, I want, we want a king just like the other nations. And Samuel goes, man, I just don't think this is right, God. He goes, no, it's not right. But it's not on you, it's on them. They're rejecting me and they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting what God has for them. So God had a promise for the children of Israel. But 40, 400 years, Israel is in bondage 400 years to the children of, or the men, the, the, the country of um, Egypt. Now, plans, purposes of God. I can't even begin to figure that all out, and neither can you. But we have history, we have facts in history, but... I'm saying this. God did not plan for Adam to do this. But he knew Adam would do that. Right. So he had a way, a way maker. He had Jesus. Right. Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit already knew that Jesus would be there someday. Now, Israel. 
they're there. <laughs> Here we are. We're in bondage. This is what happens when you listen to the things of the world. The God of this world, you'll be in bondage. So, 400 years. I don't know how this all works out. But God had to wait 400 years for a man called Moses. A man that would say, I believe you, God. A man that would lead the children of Israel out. God's not keeping him in bondage to teach Israel a lesson, per se. Right? I mean, there's lessons learned when we go through things. But God, I'm sure, would have it a different way, per se. He would have had Adam stay right there and not venture off and do his own thing. So he found Moses. Moses is born. His mom, wow. Man, I, I love Moses. I'm going to just keep Moses. No, can't do that. He'll be killed. I'm going to trust that if I throw him in a basket and I push him into the river, God will take care of him. Right? A mom sending her baby to the alligators, per se. Hoping. But in her heart, I just know, man, if Pharaoh finds her, finds him, someone from Pharaoh's family will raise him. Here we go. Here's Moses. Okay, I better keep moving here. I'm almost done, so we'll be, we'll be good. <clears throat> so Adam... And those who have chosen to walk in the lust of man are making decisions out of their own sinful nature. God is looking for men and women who are willing to follow the instructions of God and willing to carry out the instructions of God. Whether it be in prison, whether it be in the valley, whether it be on the mountaintop. God is looking for an individual who will believe him and carry out his plan. Now, like I said before, so many times we're praying ourselves out of situations when, you know what? Shine your light in the situation. Share Jesus in the situation. We read a book, um, it was um, La Paul, I, I think a guy from La Paul anyway. He was, <clears throat> he, he prayed, loved the Lord. And so he would witness, right? He would witness to prisoners. This is back in the 40s, back in the day. And, and he would witness to prisoners, and they go, dude, this guy's a nuisance. I'm going to send him to another prisoner. Send him to another prison, what does he do? He just witnesses to them, right? So by <clears throat> default, he's witnessing to all these people. He didn't care. It, whether I'm in prison here or in prison here, I'm going to do the glory of the Lord. I'm going to share Jesus. And so they actually transported him from one prison to another just to share the gospel. Isn't that cool? <clears throat> That's the plan of God. That's the will of God. But you have to be willing to say, here I am. Use me. Okay? We don't like pain. So when pain comes or discomfort comes, we go, get me out of here. No, that's not how we pray. That's not how we pray in that sense. Okay, now, now, um, so we have, in general, have partnered with and listened to our own self, and we've listened to the God of this world. Here it is. We, mankind, still... You might argue with me a little bit, and, and I, I, could be, um, I could be wrong in this, but I, I, I would stand on this until you prove me wrong. But I say this, that even though he is the God of this world, man still has the authority to be, have dominion over the earth and subdue, okay? It's just that we're listening to and cooperating with the wrong spirit, okay? But we still have authority. Now, Jesus comes, right? Make sure I'm not getting ahead here. Jesus comes, and 
Now, don't get mixed up with the incorruptible seed and the um, perishable seed with the incorruptible seed or the corruptible seed of Adam, okay? I'm not talking about that part. So Jesus comes and he reinstates you and I, right, into the rightful position of Adam, okay? Now, the position. So here we are. The covenant brought us back into cooperation with the Father and his will. Now, now, God was all powerful even then. Even now, he always will be. But now, <clears throat> we've allowed his sovereignty to be used and to, and to walk in in our life. <clears throat> Therefore, we're way makers. I mean, the very song we sang. We have the authority. Jesus says, I give you all authority. He says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. He's given you the authority, right, to preach the gospel. Those who preach the gospel, guess what's going to follow? Signs and wonders. You preach the gospel, you preach Jesus. You lift Jesus up. And those things will follow. Okay? Because we're in cooperation with a sovereign God who is all-powerful and all-knowing. We're in covenant with him. Only, only, only believers, only disciples, only those who have been born again are walking in this scenario. If you're not born again, you're in here. You're right there. You call it judgment. You can call it whatever you want. But unless you are born again, right, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is goodness and greatness and whatever. Now, why pray? Therefore, when we pray by faith, we are reaching, we are reaching into the spirit realm, freaks people out. We're reaching into the covenant. We're spirit beings, just so you know. And by faith, we're reaching into the covenant, and we're bringing it here on earth. Wow, okay? That's the promise. So we say, God, why aren't you doing something? He said, I already did. I'm waiting for an individual. I'm waiting for someone to say, I believe your word. I believe what you are doing. I believe that there are people that need to be saved. I believe there are people that need to be healed. I believe. And I believe it's in the covenant that Jesus died on the cross for us. And therefore, I am going to pray in accordance with his will that his will would be here on this done here on this earth as it is in heaven. So we're reaching in. We're reaching in and we're bringing faith by faith. We're bringing here the covenant of God. Yes. So don't say God's not doing anything because God is doing something, but he's using you. He has to use you. He's bound by his word. So if, if nothing's happening, read his word because there's things happening. He's a God of a covenant. Jesus is, he is, he is um, let, me, let me pull it up here. Jesus is praying for you. He's interceding for you. For you. He's in heaven interceding for you. That you will have eyes to hear, or eyes to see and ears to hear. That you will walk in the goodness of God. That your mind would be opened. And it is opened. Right? Your mind is opened. You're able to see the goodness of God. Stay here. Stay here. Stay here. Stay on the firm foundation. Pray. 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 <laughs> That's why we pray. We pray to bring heaven here on this earth. God's not going to do whatever he wants. God's going to do according to his will and his purposes and his divine nature. And according to his name. So you and I have a great responsibility of bringing heaven here on this earth. Now, you'll, you'll hear this. Well, that was Jesus. Okay, explain to me what that means. What does that mean to you? 
do you, can you do the things that Jesus did? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Jesus was absolutely without sin. Jesus was absolutely walking in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. The minute, the minute you start doing self stuff, you are, I'm not saying that you're not born again. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that you are not going to be able to walk out the covenant as well as the Lord would want it to happen. And, and honestly, we've been talking about this. Life is not about you anymore as a Christian. It's not about you. It's about them. And the minute we get our eyes off ourselves and look at him and them and what he wants for them, it's going to be a whole lot better. Amen? Now, let's follow the plan. Let's follow the plan. It will be well with us if we follow the plan. Because the sovereignty of God, the power of God, is released through us because of Jesus. Because Jesus connected the relationship, if you want to say, our spirit has been made alive. Our eyes have been opened. Our ears have been opened. I want to turn to um, Hebrews 6.17. I'm going to read it out of the New Living Translation. Because sometimes we get lost in some of the wording. I was talking about, as an individual, you're praying the will of God. You're praying the word of God. You're praying that heaven would come here down on earth. How does that look? Or what does that look like? Here it is. Hebrews 6, 17. Here it is. Where's Kirsten? Kirsten? Okay. Somewhere. Yeah. We're going to throw the song up there a little bit. Here we go. 617. Um, New Living Translation. Here we go. God has bound himself... With an oath. We already talked about that. He's bound to his word in a good way. So that those who receive the promise could be perfectly sure that he would never change his mind. So God has given both his promise and his oath or his word. Those two things are unchangeable because it's impossible for God to lie. Aren't you glad God is not a shifting shadow? He is steadfast. His word is true. He's faithful. He is just. Every decision that he makes is out of love. It's out of, uh, out of his all-knowing. And, and therefore, he is, he is there, right? God does not lie. Therefore, we who fled to him for refuge, those who are born again, can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us. This hope is strong and trustworthy. This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. It leads us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary. That's the veil that he's talking about. Sin separated us. Sin separated us from God. The veil has been torn. That means sin's power has been broken. Jesus walked through with his blood as a man. He walked through, right? He was a um, he became the sacrificial lamb. As he walked into there, he sprinkled his own blood on the mercy seat for you and I. That mercy would be applied to our lives. Amen. Okay? And as, as a result, it leads us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary. Jesus has already gone in there before us. This is not a new thing. Jesus has already been there. People have walked through that. I think of the, the words, come boldly to the throne room of grace. What is that saying? Come into my presence. Come into covenant with me. Okay? Now, how do you pray? Believing it's so. Prayer reaches in and manifests the promises of God here on this earth. With this, in with this as a reminder that God continues to use us 
to fulfill the plans and purposes of his. Even if it means you going into the valley. Paul was imprisoned only to share the good news of Jesus. The question is, are you willing to go? The other question that we must ask today is, are you here? Or are you here? Church doesn't save you. Religion doesn't save you. Religion doesn't bring you into connection with God. Only the blood of the lamb. Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. And what is happening is men and women are pushing off. They're pushing off the truth. Oh, I'll do that. I'll do that later. I'll do that when I get to high school or I'll do that when I go to college or I'll do that when I get to get married. Then I'll have time. The truth is, the truth is, right? But what do we do? We're being deceived by thinking I got another day or I got another year or just next time. I'm just not sure yet. I'll tell you what, Holy Spirit is working even right now. He's working in your heart. He's saying, that's you. He's going, that's you. That's you. God does not force himself on you, but he gives you opportunity. He gives us opportunity. Here he is, he's on the other side, just waiting. Just waiting for you to answer it. And he just waits. But he is constant and consistent in speaking to you and saying, come. Come to my father's house. Come to me. All who are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. can't have the yoke of the world and the yoke of God. This doesn't work. You have to make a decision. Today, we thank you. Why don't you just bow your head? That's you today. You want to make a decision. Say, that's me. Maybe raise your hand. It's a bold statement. It's a bold decision. Change the rest of your life, though. It'll change your life. It'll change your life. Today's the day. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. Just go ahead and keep your eyes closed. The Lord gave me this part of this this morning and then part of this um, during worship. And, but he wouldn't let me give it beforehand. And there's a reason. It was so that the things that pastor has given today, you understand that it's coming right out of the throne room and the seriousness of it. And the Lord said, my people seek me. They ask, what is my gift, my purpose? What am I here for? Yet when it's revealed, to, it's met with unbelief and resistance as if such a thing is too lofty for them. The things that God has for us, the gifts that he's given us, we act sometimes like we're glad we have them, but it's too lofty for me. It's, it's, it's not something I can really do. And he asked, he says, am I a God who dangles things like carrots and, and, and treasures and pulls them in, away from you? Do I, do I offer them to you and pull it back? Am I not he who laid down my life so you could live? If I would do such a thing, would I not perform all my word? He said to be bold and courageous and to go forth in confidence, not of yourselves, but in me. The word of the Lord is real. The things that he says are real. It's life and it's life for now. It's for today. The time is, is now. It's not going to be tomorrow. Everything that he said, and Michelle saw me write it before pastor ever spoke. 
but they confirm what he's saying. And you have to understand the depth of, of, the, of the seriousness of the times and what God expects from us. The time is now. The time is now. Good to be back in Glasgow. Tom asked me to share, perhaps, a salvation prayer for people who don't know Jesus Christ personally and haven't given their life to him. This past year has been impressed upon me as I've had many memorial services that if life is like a game of baseball, when you get it slide into home plate, there are two options. Either you're safe or you're out. You're safe if you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You're out if you have never received him. John 3.16 says, God so loved the world, you and me, that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in the Son, would not perish, but have everlasting life. So the choice is perishing or everlasting life. Today might be your day of salvation, that you decide, you know, I've kind of fiddled with this long enough. I want Jesus Christ to be my Lord and Savior. I maybe sat in church for 10 years, but never really personally said, Jesus, I want you to be my Lord and my Savior. Jesus just doesn't want to be just your fire insurance about not going to hell. He wants to be your Lord and your Savior. So we're going to say this sinner's prayer. I want each one of you to repeat it with me. And if in your heart you believe it, prayer changes things. It changes your destiny in this case. Tom talked about prayer. Why do we pray? Because pray can influence God. And if you pray and sincerely mean it, your life will forever be changed. So bow your heads and just say with me, My Father in heaven, thank you for sending Jesus to Calvary. Lord Jesus, I'm so thankful you paid the price for my sin. And Lord, because you rose from the grave, I know everything you said is true. And Lord Jesus, I want to ask you to come into my heart to be my Lord and the Savior of my life. Thank you for forgiving me of all my sins. And Lord, help me to forgive those who have sinned against me. I love you, Lord Jesus, and I thank you for changing my life. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. By faith, we reached in and we brought the promise of God. The words that were spoken. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. (laughs) Thank you for choosing me today, Lord. Thank you for choosing us. Thank you for giving me the ability to choose you. Thank you for grace. And therefore, Lord, we thank you today for your goodness and your greatness, for you are sovereign. And we allow you to be sovereign in our lives. For we have submitted to you. We've submitted our lives to you today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. We love you. Appreciate you. Um, amen. Amen. If you need to, if you need prayer, um, we'd be willing to pray with you.
You made a decision, make sure you tell somebody. That'd be awesome. Confessing with your mouth. Amen.